an outbreak of SARS. The virus originated in mainland China. It spread across the country. The disease had been festering for months in southern China. SARS-CoV-2, or COVID-19, in the microscope looks like a sphere with pointy things sticking out. But its structure is more complex. This virus comes from a family of beta-coronaviruses, which possess a single-stranded positive sense RNA with structural proteins and protein spikes, which are responsible for the viral infectivity. In Wuhan, a province of China, COVID-19 began affecting people, causing the involvement of the lower respiratory tract that led to an acute respiratory syndrome in December 2019. The symptoms of this virus are fever, cough, shortness of breath, pneumonia, kidney failure, and diarrhea. It began affecting people who were related with the seafood and animal market. Now the question is why? Why does it affect the people who were related with animals? It was not a surprise at all, and I think that it was not a surprise to many scientists. It is said that this virus was born in animals and it was able to be transferred to humans. This process is known as a spillover. From December 31st, 2019 to March 12, 2020, more than 1,025 cases were reported in 118 countries. More than 4,500 people have lost their battle against COVID-19. Now, you may wonder how does this virus spread all over the world and become a pandemic? Well. First, we need to know what the difference between a pandemic and an epidemic. An epidemic is a disease that only affects a large number of people within a community, population, or region. A pandemic is a disease that spreads globally and infects a large number of people. Think of this. The epidemic is when a disease is actively spreading, while a pandemic has a P at the beginning of its word, that can be related to passport. It is a global spread disease that affects all the world. But how does this invisible building can be anywhere? Well, coronavirus can be in any object or in the air. This virus was transported from one place to another by trains, buses, airplanes, and even by human contact. Some scientists say that this virus can be spread thanks to closed spaces that do not have frequent ventilation. For example, air conditioning. If you are on an airplane or on a bus and someone sneezes or cough, these particles are spread to every space of the airplane and bus. Through air conditioner channels, this air is recycled and everyone is breathing the virus. Nevertheless, COVID-19 can be spread from an infected person to a healthy person. Last but not least, each country will have a different curve of contagion depending on the safety instructions and the restrictions governments and the World Health Organization have established. This pandemic will continue increasing if we do not take this virus seriously. A protagonist in the fight against the coronavirus is your immune system. Once infected, your cells start following the virus commands. They are no longer healthy cells, so they are now led by the virus, causing your body to react in a different way. The immune system is supported by numerous plasma proteins that could act as a messenger or help to destroy the virus. It is important to ask yourself, how does your immune system react when COVID-19 enters your body? The first immune response is made by some cells which are able to sense the virus. White blood cells, called macrophages, use a set of sensors to recognize the pathogen and it immediately starts to produce a protein called cytokine to stop the virus. This protein will turn your temperature up, as a lot of viruses die at high temperatures, so your body gives you a fever. If everything goes well, you will kill the virus and some kind of immunity could be developed. The third line of defense. First, in the adaptive response, the cytotoxic T cell, a white blood cell, has the ability to destroy cells that have been infected by COVID-19. It can do this by releasing a protein called perforin, which actually forms holes in the cell membranes and causes the cells to do apoptosis. 
when the cells are destroyed, this can also destroy the COVID-19, or at least the pathogen can no longer replicate it inside the destroyed cells. Also, B cells generate antibodies. These markers are specific for the coronavirus only, or specifically for its protein spikes. Antibodies attach to the virus and prevent it from attaching to our cells. Then, the immune system responds to signals from the antibodies by consuming and destroying the clumps of viruses. If everything goes well, you will kill the virus and you will develop some immunity to it. That means that if you then catch the virus at a later stage, your body will recognize and destroy it. That's thanks to memory cells. Memory cells store memories from the coronavirus antigen that they were exposed to. That helps to create a vision plan attack if the coronavirus is ever in contra again in the future. Memory B cells can activate plasma B cells, which will make antibodies. And memory T cells can activate cytotoxic T cells that will go after infected cells. However, dysregulated adaptive host immune defense may cause harmful tissue damage at both the site of the virus entry and at the systematic level. The excessive pro-inflammatory host response has been hypothesized to induce an immune pathology, resulting in the rapid course of acute lung injury. Other example is the massive cytokine and chemokine release. The so-called cytokine storm clearly reflects a widespread uncontrolled dysregulation of host immune defense. This inflammation triggers a fluid buildup in the lungs. The fluids also contains the residue of a host of specialized cells, including T cells. The bomb damages many of the body's own cells as well as the viral particles. It is in the ejecting of this fluid when the dry cough appears, a classic characteristic of the coronavirus infection. As more air sacs get infected, the lungs find it harder to perform their core job of extracting oxygen from the air, and eventually this aggravates breathlessness. I chose this topic because I consider that this pandemic has brought many changes. It affected the way that the world used to be and it can be seen in the simplest things because now people can't go to work, to school or just hang out with their friends. These common things people used to do had to stop so lives could be safe. As this situation is something that none of us have ever lived before, we were not prepared. And that's why many people have developed mental illness that can affect their thinking and their behavior. The major aspects that affect mental health during this pandemic are the limitation of personal freedom, the financial losses, as well as the media, which is constantly showing conflicting messages from the authorities. These events are the major stressors that can increase psychiatric illness. Firstly, this health emergency can affect individuals in the same way that it can affect communities. Individuals can be affected due to isolation, stigma, stress, and confusion. Additionally, communities owing to economical losses, closure of workplaces and schools, inadequate medical responses, and lack in necessities. Secondly, studies have said that after disasters in relation with medical conditions from natural causes, such as COVID-19, which is also a life-threatening viral infection, it is required a psychopathologic diagnosis owing to aspects such as depressive and anxiety disorders. Thirdly, tests that have been done to quarantine people revealed many emotional outcomes, such as stress, depression, irritability, insomnia, fear, frustration, and many more. Some of the factors they mentioned were the undefined duration of the confinement, having lack of supplies, financial losses, the fear to get infected, and the fear that one of their loved ones could contract the virus. Psychological illness caused by this pandemic can be normalized not only by informing people about common reactions to this kind of stress, but also by showing 
how it can be managed. In my opinion, if mental health is integrated to the coronavirus care, it will be ensure mechanisms to identify and treat psychological consequences. To continue, I will talk about my personal experience from this quarantine. First of all, I know I'm not the only one living with a big uncertainty about what is, what is going to happen. Every day I think what could happen to my family, friends, their jobs, and health. Constantly I read the news, especially El Espectador, to get informed. But my fear and sadness increase because changes are rough and we're living a world crisis with a huge human suffering. And in fact, this pandemic has brought the greatest economic, financial and social shock of the 21st century, after 9-11 and the global financial crisis of 2008. It is sad to see how people come by my neighborhood asking for food every day. Some days I get panic attacks, my anxiety levels go up, giving me the worst migraines. And it is difficult to handle because I think that there's no way to feel better. Other days, I wake up hopeless because every time the quarantine is longer, making me think that social and productive life will never come back. Also, it affects my parents' jobs, so there is a really stressful environment. Anyways, I am really thankful because even in the worst, I have a family who loves me, a place to live and food in the table. Hi Moni, my name is Juana Añez and my group and I decided to talk about mental health. First, we need to know what this big word means. Mental health refers to cognitive, behavioral and emotional well-being. During quarantine, it is important to keep yourself active and also create new routines and habits. Coronavirus can bring us a lot of emotions such as fear, anxiety or stress. Nevertheless, it also helps us to continue following the restrictions and the safety instructions the government and the World Health Organization has established. On the other hand, mental health was not a big deal for me. I didn't know what it was and how it involves all the human organisms. Taking care of our mental health during a pandemic is very difficult because, well, we're locked down. However, there are several ways of how to keep your brain distracted and healthy. For example, I like to wake up early before class and I like to make exercise and then I like to take a shower and have my breakfast. I started uh, new habits such as cleaning my own room and also be aware of the time that classes start and end. Uh, nonetheless, I also uh, am taking back um, what I eat, so I'm taking care of more about it. But that's my, my point of view, right? Uh, one thing you can do is wake up early and sometimes it will be hard, but it will make your day uh, longer and you have more attitude. When you wake up and you open your eyes, try to distinguish the first things by two good senses, hearing and looking. Don't take right away your phone and be overloaded of information of COVID-19 and social media on news. Take care of the people that you love. Some of them might feel bored lonely or isolated. Make them see that they are not the only ones who are in this pandemic and we are all dealing with this. Something very important for your mental health is having stretches. But not only stretches, breathing. You can have one minute of inhaling and exhaling and also stretching and that will make you have more energy and be right back with a better attitude working. Do not work on places that are very noisy or that you can get distracted easily. Don't work on your bed and even do not work 
inside your blankets. Something that really helped me is to use my favorite clothes but not the most comfortable clothes because then my body will feel that I'm tired and that will not make me uh, be more productive at the day and my brain will be out of what I need to do. Well, these are some ideas of how to keep your mental health active and also um, healthy, which is the most important thing. But also, uh, well, the most important thing right now is to stay at home. Mental health is a very interesting topic to talk about. I choose it because it plays a role while talking about COVID-19 and quarantine. I like it because it's something that affects people from all ages and affects the way they deal with this situation. Also, it is important to note that if you had, have a good mental health, quarantine is easier to handle. Self-isolation and social distancing had made this situation harder to handle. 55% of the people that responded a survey made by the Benson Strategy Group said that the coronavirus situation has affected their mental health. People of all ages have been affected by the isolation, but the most vulnerable groups are the teens. As most of the cases of depression and mental health impairment are shown in teens. That's why the teens generation mental health history puts them in a vulnerable position at this moment in history. While dealing with quarantine, you can present insomnia, low mood, and stress and confusion. Such feelings are no more given the circumstances. Uh, however, there are things you can do to protect your mental health and well-being while dealing with quarantine. The first uh, things you should do uh, is establish a routine. With this, you could have more productive days and feel better about your day. You should also try to sleep early so that your sleeping schedule stays balanced. By doing this, you will also improve your health. It is recommended to practice sports. Not only helps you to entertain yourself for a moment, but it raises your defenses and benefits your immune system. In the same way, you should look for something to distract yourself, such as reading, painting, or doing something you like. It is also important to disconnect from the devices for a while. As researchers had said, when you disconnect and you will notice a sense of relaxation, which will make you feel more calm. Moreover, it is important to be informed, but you should limit the information as it can become overwhelming. Now, talking about my experience while dealing with quarantine, I can say that it has not been easy. This situation has made me realize the lucky person I am. Nevertheless, I think I have been able to deal with this isolation in a good way. I try to create a routine so that my day could be more productive. I work out every day since quarantine started, so it has now become part of my daily routine. It has helped me to relax and entertain myself for a while. Then I will take a shower, and if I need to advance some work, I will do it. Uh, in addition, uh, I had cook a lot and try to learn new things every day. The things I like about quarantine is that I have been able to spend some quality time with my family and learn a little bit more about each one. It's a little bit hard not being able to see your friends or loved ones, but I think this will open people's minds and will build some kindness in humanity. For now, the only thing we can do is be patient, have a positive mind, and follow all of the sanitary laws so that we can get through this pandemic quicker. Today, I am going to talk about mental health. When it comes to discussing COVID-19 and quarantine, mental health is a topic that plays a big role. I consider that this pandemic is affecting human development and creating fear and worry. That's why I think it's important to talk 
and learn how to manage this kind of feelings and situations. First of all, we know that the uncertainty and low predictability of COVID-19 not only threatens people's physical health, but it also affects people's mental health, especially in terms of emotions and cognition. There are different phases of mental health distress that one experiences at different points in a pandemic. Likewise, there are other differences that probably distinguish COVID-19 from other disasters. For example, the level of self-isolation, distancing, travel restrictions, and in some cases, the economic situation because of the lack of work. Currently, after the declaration of COVID-19, People are showing more negative emotions like anxiety, depression, indignation, and sensitivity to social risks. Then, positive emotions like happiness. This was supported by the theory of BIS. This theory states that people generate more negative emotions for self-protection. In addition, the reason why this seriously affects us is because as humans, we love predictability. We love situations where we can anticipate what's gonna occur next. Actually, our brains release a chemical that calms us and allows us to stay focused. However, when we face situations that are unpredictable, that's when our brains release a different chemical that kind of emotionally activate us and stress us to say look around what's going on in order to build a sense of productivity and control. Also what's challenging with the coronavirus is that it creates a triple threat. First it's unsure who actually has it and that degree of uncertainty make us uncomfortable. Second it's unsure how many people are gonna get it and that also creates a degree of fear. Third, we don't know how much longer this is gonna last and until when this is gonna keep disrupting our daily lives. Then, our challenge during these times is to practice tactics and techniques that actually calm our brains. So the first one is quite simple as it is related to breathing. It's about taking deep, slow breaths in and then slow in exhaling. It actually is a way of reset our bodies and our brains. The second way is really important. It's about sticking to your daily basis routine. Whether your daily habits involve sleeping, sleeping, waking up at a certain hour, eating the food you usually enjoy, we need to keep those consistent. And a part of this is to ensure that you are exercising, getting exposure to natural light and being intentional to infuse fun or some degree of enjoyment into your day. Into your day. The third one is to ensure to maintain active social connectedness. Staying connected is needed now more than ever. So. Be very intense about reaching out to friends and family. Lastly, stay informed, but manage your exposure to media so that you're getting the information, information you need, but not a constant improvement exposure. Also, my next point is ultimately about learning to be okay with things not being perfect. It consists consists of having a balance between being active and bossy, but not overdoing it to the point that we are stressing ourselves out. Behind that need to be productive is this fear that somehow the sense of self-worth is, is tied to producing a lot. And what really matters is getting through this with a calm state of mind and a healthy state of well-being. We need to change our mindset from what if to now what that give us 
some sense of control and hope. In addition, for many individuals during this time when they are experiencing, experiencing some stress, maybe anxiety or depression, they wait and they wait too long before they seek help. So again, don't wait. Take action and seek aid. And that allows you to ensure you are being taken care of yourself and therefore you are you can care for others. Thank you. Il faut se laver les mains. Il faut être confiné. Il faut désinfecter au gel hydroalcoolique. Il faut porter un masque et il faut porter des gants. Il faut arrêter les pièces de la maison. Il faut tousser dans son côté. <coughs> il faut éternuer dans son côté. <coughs> Il faut maintenir une distance de 2 mètres. Il faut consulter un médecin si vous avez du mal à respirer. Il faut garder une routine. Il faut faire du sport. 